actor, producer, director, won an outstanding supporting actor in a comedy series for Barry. You can see that on HBO Sundays at uh, 1030 Eastern. It's season two. Uh, he plays uh, Gene Cousineau, an eccentric uh, acting teacher who is uh, revered by his students. Is that a good student? Uh, I mean, is that a good description of, uh, of Gene? Yeah, yeah he, in, in the classroom, he's an emperor. In real life, uh, he tries out for the guy uh, third in line. Okay. You know, he, he's trying to make it and can't. And, uh, and, of course, it's Henry Winkler. But uh, Bear, uh, Bill Hader is the star. He's a serial killer who decides right. that his calling is really acting. Right. He followed a mark through a door. He is a, uh, is a, a hired gun. Yeah. And the, the mark happened to be in an acting class. And Bill said, oh, my gosh, I don't want to kill people anymore. I want to be an actor. So he, he has to be in the dark, uh, out of the light, as a, a serial killer. Now he wants to be in the light with the spotlight on him. It's pretty um, crazy. Do you remember when you first read the script? Would yes, you? I do. I do. I, I, was, uh, I left an estate planning uh, meeting on Ventura Boulevard, and I was driving down uh, Ventura Boulevard thinking about a black and white cookie from Bee's Bakery. And I, this is not true. And I got a phone call, and they said, "Well, Bill Hader wants to meet you." I went, "Bill Hader," and it's on HBO. And I went, "Oh, HBO." And I said, "Okay, is Dustin Hoffman on the short list I'm on? <laughs> because if he is, I'm not going in because he's going to get it." Have you they, lost to Dustin before? Uh, yes, so many times. <laughs> yes. Do you hate Dustin Hoffman? I don't. Okay. I don't hate him. <laughs> I'm just. Holly, a, bring out Dustin Hoffman. Uh, come on, where is he? He can he can sit right here on the floor next to me. It's uh, no. I, it, Dustin is a great. I love his wife and his kids are great. Yeah. But anyway, so I said, if Dustin is up, I'm not going in. They said, no, he's not. And so I went in, and um, many months later, after auditioning, I got it. What do people say when they see you? Wow, you street. are so short. <laughs> I, um, that's that's a, a big thing they say. Uh, no, they say thank you for all of the years of happiness and the, the laughter. And, and then people know me for different things. Uh, Happy Days, Scream, uh, Adam Sandler movies. Uh, there, I mean, there really are sections. Then uh, Arrested Development. Uh, night uh, Shift. Night Shift. Oh, I love Night Shift. Michael Keaton. Yeah. Great. He's great. But, you know, the movie still holds up. I mean, it is still a funny movie. Uh, Ron Howard said to me, you can play either role. And so I thought, well, I've played the Fonz for 10 years. I'm going to play Richie. And that's what I did. I played Chuck. But how big, did you realize how big you were with Happy Days? With, like, how famous you were? After a while, you cannot miss it. Uh, because, uh, you know, it was very scary to walk on the street. How so? uh, because people wanted to take my socks off without ever taking off my shoes. <laughs> they, I mean, they really wanted a piece of whatever I was wearing or my hair. Was it like boy band? Where it was big. It was 126 countries. I got 55,000 letters a week. Uh, I got jewelry. I got, you know, like little crucifixes, a little bears. Girls would take their jewelry off. And this is what I learned from my fan mail. Jewish girls do not send their jewelry through the mail. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was very big. And um, I went to Dodger Stadium. Yeah. Uh, I took my children to see uh, a Dodger game, and they put my picture on the Diamond Vision in the middle of the field, and 55,000 people started chanting, Henry, Henry, Fonzie, Fonzie. <laughs> So the uh, security guards uh, got me and put me back in my car, and we listened to the game on the way home. And I went into my daughter's room, and I said, Zoe, we made a deal. that Some of your clothing was going to get, like, on a hanger before we left for the game. She looked at me, and she said, I will never chant your name. <laughs> I'm not even going to whisper your name. Wow. Yeah, I was a big guy in my house. Yeah, you were. You were. Yeah. I was trying to tell people what it was like. 
I was a senior in high school. Where? And I, and I remember in Ohio. Right. And, and what, what city? Uh, Mason, Ohio. Mason, So outside Ohio. of Cincinnati. Yeah. <gasps> One of the great restaurants in the country wa- is now in Cincinnati and was when I first uh, started going around the country. And I'm interrupting your story. You this are. Is, I'm such a great It was a guest. great story, too. <laughs> no, I know. But, <laughs> and I'm going to come right back to the story. Okay. I'm not kidding. Okay. But um, in Cincinnati is Boca. It's called Boca. One of the best Italian restaurants in uh, America. Go ahead. Thank you very much. We now resume our regularly scheduled program. We're back in Mason. Okay. Uh, I was being introduced at a basketball game. Right. And we went out. And, you know, they'd say, an ad guard. And then you'd go out, and we did the thumbs up. Yeah. We did the Fonz thumbs up Thank in the you. middle of the court. Thank you. We lost, and we never did it again. No. But we did. Uh, that was you know what? I don't deal. care about the losing because I've never played basketball. Uh, but I do care about the thumbs up. Yeah, it was big. That was, that, I take that as a great compliment. Yeah. Do you have – you collect sports memorabilia? You know what? I have – uh, I, I have uh, uh, Shaq's shoe signed, okay. and I actually used it as a canoe. Um, <laughs> it, it is a very big shoe. <laughs> and I, I have a ball that is signed by the Lakers when, uh, in the 80s, I had seats uh, when Abdul Jabbar. And was magic. there. And, and so here is that how crazy and non sports me I am. I go backstage to see the players um, of the Lakers after the game. And Mr. Abdul Jabbar throws a jersey at me. And I did not know he meant that I could have it. I threw it in the laundry <laughs> bin. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This was a, um, the Happy Days ball team. We, we, we went all across the country playing softball uh, at the Phillies um, uh, state, Stadium and uh, the, the Milwaukee Brewers yeah. and uh, the Mets. You know, I write children's books uh, called Hank Zipser, The World's Greatest Underachiever. He is a dyslexic little boy who's very funny, and he is a Mets fan. Because they are underachievers, too. <laughs> and you uh, found out you had dyslexia when you were writing well, I'm 31. This? Oh, you were. I okay. was 31. Okay. And uh, uh, my stepson, Jed, uh, was having trouble. And very verbal and smart. And I kept thinking he was just being, like I was told, being lazy. And finally we had him tested. And everything they said about him was true about me. A one out of five children. Um, have some sort of learning challenge in the world. And we have to take care of those kids because they have enormous potential. And once you somebody realizes that you have it, yeah, you know, like oh, and it's hereditary. Lady. Yeah. How about that? I did not Mr. know. Mr. P. It's hereditary. So my parents who would yell at me and ground me and be embarrassed by me, they were the ones who <laughs> gave it to me. <laughs> He's uh, Henry Winkler. You got to see the show, Barry. It's Barry. Sunday uh, at 1030 Eastern on HBO with uh, Bill Hader. The supporting cast is spectacular. They are. They're, the Chechnians. And, and yes. I mean, it's just it's a it's a great show and it's a half hour. So, you know what? Yeah. You know, easy to binge on it. Consume it. It is. There are eight episodes in the in the first season. Last Sunday, this past Sunday was our first of the second season. Yeah. And I am very, very proud. I mean, look, I, I got the Fonz when I was 27, and I'm now 73, and here I am on this incredible show. You always know you're on a good show through, when you walk through an airport. People will either say, hey, how are you? It's good to see you. Or, I love Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Or they'll quote lines from it or Absolutely. You know, something like that. Or they will go, hey. <laughs> Very original. Could you have handled the success of Fonzie at 21 or 22? I have figured out, honestly, I put it together. There is an emotional component to being dyslexic. You have a very low self-esteem because you are failing at everything. Yeah. Thinking, how is this possible? I knew my words last night in my house. Now in the classroom, I've completely forgotten them. 
when people would talk to me about Fonzie or the, you know, that you're the greatest thing or you're wonderful, and I would think this is good and I'm feeling good, but they can't possibly be talking about me because I know I'm a failure. So I think that that helped me wow. uh, with the success and, and not taking it to heart. I was at the Teddy uh, Hotel, the yes. Roosevelt Hotel, yes. the Teddy Bar. Yes. I met your son. Max. Max was with Jonah Hill. Yes, they grew up together, Jonah Hill. Now, let me just say this. This is a, has nothing to do with Barry, but Jonah Hill's sister, Beanie, yeah. Beanie Feldstein, is in a movie called Booksmart that is coming out directed by Olivia Wilde. I'm telling you, you are going to be charmed out of your soul by this movie. Um, but anyway, Jonah um, would sit in my house and call restaurants and pretend he was uh, Brad Pitt's assistant and say, Brad is coming in. He needs a kazoo at every, at every setting. And he would do these pranks in my living room. It was funny. And I just was hoping they wouldn't call back and find out it was me. But your son, Max, came up to me, yes. and he wanted to talk football. Yes. He was like, what do you think of USC? So I, I'm with Sandler's writing partner, Jack Garaputo. I, I know Jack. So Jack goes, uh, this guy right here is going to be huge. And it was Jonah. So Jonah didn't even have any movies out, right. I don't think, at the time. And all of a sudden, Jonah comes over with Max, and they start talking football. Yeah. And I'm going, this guy is going to be a big, like, I, I'm thinking, I, understand. I wonder what he was going to be in. You know what? That you never know. You cannot judge a book I by know, its cover. I know. But I yeah. just remember he And now Max, our son, just directed his third movie uh, and is editing it for a Ridley Scott's company. Has, has he put you in a movie? He, oh, yes. Yes. He did. They were all student films. Okay. He has never actually hired me with hard cash. Wouldn't it be great if he hired Dustin Hoffman yeah. instead of you? But do you know what? <laughs> that would really piss me off. But he, you know what he did do? He um, directed me for my audition for Barry. He was there. He looked over the, the scenes. He made me do the scenes for him. And then he would criticize. Uh, he would critique me. Oh, wow. And then I went the next day and uh, auditioned. But isn't that great that your son gets to that level where he feels confident enough to be able to say to you, Dad, Yes, I'm going to treat you as an actor. Uh, he is a wise fellow. My daughter Zoe is a beautiful teacher and now the mother of three. And Jed is in business and has two beautiful daughters. Uh, Barry, Sunday's at 10. At 10. Yeah, 10. Barry is at 10. 10 on HBO. With You've Bill written Hader. down 10.30 at yes, home. Yes, I did, and I apologize. Na no, not just you. I think so. All of your listeners, how many are there? There's, oh, it's many? millions. It's 10. 10. On HBO. Can we go door to door? Fritzy. I would go door to door. I'm the one that needs to go door to door because I, I put 10.30 there because I had gotten the wrong information. No, 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 but I, I, I actually have no pride. I would go door to door. You would door go to door, door to door? To all of your fans. Okay. Where, where are they located? They're all over the world. Is that true? Yes. We could be talking now to Switzerland? We could be talking. Uh, we're big in, in Switzerland. I can't walk down the streets in Switzerland. Do you know what? I studied French in Switzerland, and being so dyslexic, I learned one word. <laughs> Bibliothèque. Oh. That means library. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I just remember... Uh, I'm we, a man. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a man of many languages. We evoquer je cherche un livre. No. Yeah. But remember in, in écoutez et répétez? Wow. Like, yeah. I don't know what the hell you're saying. Exactly. It's, I said but Barry you at 10 o'clock. Did you notice that we were thinking the same? I, I, have, I love the color green. I, you know what? I, I love color. I yeah. really do. And you look great. Too. Yeah. And my pants are green. I, mine are green, too. Yeah. Well, they kind of look grayish. Mr. They're greenish. They're greenish. They're green grayish. Uh, uh, the, the Danettes had one question for you. What is the question for Henry Winkler? It's Sunday at 10. You mean you've got millions of fans and there's like one question? Well, on behalf of them. We usually uh, don't get to ask anything. Yeah. Oh, okay. But they said, could we ask you one question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Mr. Winkler. Yes, sir. On behalf of all Happy Days fans, yes. when you were an actor during or after the first season of Happy Days, what were you told was the reason Gavin O'Hurley, Chuck Cunningham, was not going to be in the future of the show? Richie had a brother named Chuck okay, in the now first here's season. Okay, the, here's the truth. The actual story. Here's the truth. First of all, this is how great 
and loyal the Fonz is. He watches Barry at 10 o'clock on Sunday night on HBO. Okay. I'm not kidding. So not 1030. He calls me up. He said, I want to tell you something. That is like, (laughs) that is a great character. I love him. And, you know, he's, he's a funny guy. Okay. Here's the truth. There was a, there was a (laughs) first Chuck who left because he didn't want to be an actor. He got the job and then decided he didn't want to be an actor and left. Then Gavin came in, Gavin O'Hurley, a wonderful, wonderful actor that Ron then used in uh, uh, other movies of his. Never used me except for Night Shift. But he, he um, wow. and the reason was he went upstairs and never came down because I became the big brother. And they, they didn't have room for two big brothers. So they wrote him out of the show. For, and that's the actual reason. Yeah. Yeah, some people said it was body odor, and I know now that that's not true. it was not. Who came up with the accent for Fonzie? I did. It came out of my little mouth. But, but you just go, this is uh, what- During the audition, I walked in, and I had long hair down to my shoulders and a gigantic sweat stain that looked like the Hudson River was flowing <laughs> under my arm. And I walked in, and I uh, just I made a decision that the guy reading with me, Pasquale, was going to sit down and I was going to be the only one standing. Then they said, hey, go to the mirror, comb your hair. I said, you know what? I have made a decision. I'm not going to comb my hair because every actor who's played a part like this combs their hair or had a comb in their back pocket. So I'll do anything, (laughs) but I won't comb my hair. But Fonz didn't need to because the hair looked That's right. And the director said, go comb your hair. So I had to be true to myself. And true to the being a professional, I walked to the mirror, I pulled out my comb, and I went, hey, I don't have to. Look at that. It's perfect. Whoa. Uh, and I just found out that Barry is on uh, Sunday nights at 10. It's at 10 o'clock on, on HBO, yeah. Sunday night. Sunday night. And you know what? Honestly, we have mentioned it many, many times yeah. and, and kind of like as a joke. But as a producer, I know you must mention everything three times at least or it doesn't go in to the um, the millions of view- viewers you've yes, got. something like that. Are they all men? No. There are some women out there, Look too? Look at me. Women, of course, are tuning in for yes. this. You know what? Silly what are you me. doing? Of I course. mean, you're not the best-looking guy in the room. That is I mean, true. Maybe no, no, no. when you were 27. Yes. But it's kind of gone now. Yeah. But the women had to be throwing themselves at you. Well, they threw things at me. Bras? They, uh, there were. Panties? There were. There were. Yes, but I returned them. <laughs> of course you did. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's awesome to have you in. Thank you. Really... I'm very happy. This is my first time. No, it's it's wonderful. Thank you, And Mr. please T. tell your son that I said hello. Tell I Max will. I said hello. And I, I do remember that he came up and he just wanted to talk USC football. I will. Well, you know, now uh, my favorite team is the Seahawks because we knew uh, Pete Carroll yeah. when he was at USC because yeah. uh, that's where Max went. Yeah. And I got to stand on the um, on the field, and they were so big that unless they stood like this with their arms, and there was a hole for me to look through, <laughs> I saw nothing. I just heard like a herd of human being running down the field. Reggie was there. Reggie Bush. Matt Reggie Liner. Bush yeah. had very skinny legs, but boy, could he run. Lindale White. Yeah. Mr. White. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. Matt. Thank Matt Liner. Matt Liner. He's uh, Henry Winkler. I act, am. Actor, producer, director, and it's Barry, and it's 10 o'clock on Sunday nights on HBO. Thank you for having me. Work for more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.